So you have all of these icons down here, and you may be asking yourself, what do they mean? Now, your view may look different than mine because I actually went and turned all of mine on. You can do that in these three little lines down here. You can choose which one of these status icons you want to leave on. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I turned everything on. There's a lot, so I'm going to go through them quickly, and I'm not going to explain too much about what each one does because that will be covered in either my tutorials or somebody else's tutorials or something. So it's really just to show you, kind of briefly tell you what each one of these things does. So <clears throat> this thing starts from the left and goes all the way to the right. So I'm going to do the same thing top down with coordinates over here. Uh, it starts right over here. So uh, this just shows you your coordinates. It, it may by default show you the live coordinates. You can just click it to go back and forth. Um, when it's kind of in a gray like this, it just shows you where you're clicking at, the two points wherever you're clicking with whatever you're doing. Click it again and it shows you uh, where your mouse is hovering at. The next one is your model and uh, paper space uh, toggle. So just click it, it sends you over to paper space, click paper here and it sends you back to model space. You'll notice that when I'm in paper space, um, some things are only available in paper space. Also, you'll notice that when I click model, it picks the viewport and goes back to model space. So this really isn't like a tab between model and paper um, or toggle. It kind of actually takes you to paper space when you click paper and then uh, into a viewport when you click model again. So um, this is actually really handy if you're working in a viewport, say you're too close and you need to get back out to paper space, uh, just click where it says model and it should take you back out of paper space. So, okay, so there's that. Um, next we're going to do uh, the drawing grid. This is just your background drawing grid. F7 also covers this. Um, this is your snap. I have snap turned off right now, but F9 or turning this on will initiate a snap. You won't see it when you're just hovering your cursor around, but when you activate a command you'll see it jump around. Uh, you can also do a polar snap on top of that which um, that's gonna be so we go to our O snap settings under your snap and grid um, that's a different type of snap um, I was gonna show the isometric probably later but uh, it just shows you what type of your what type of snap you have going on um, next we have our infer constraints um, this one's kind of goofy it just automatically applies constraints as soon as you draw an object. I got my snap still on. There we go. So as soon as I draw an object, it it attempts to put constraints on them like right away. So if this starts happening to you, turn off the infer constraints and hide it preferably. Dynamic input. This is where you can toggle the dynamic input next to your cursor. So if I want to put like move, you'll see it here. And then I grab this and you can see that it's got that little um, entry uh, next to the um, like command line entry next to the cursor that's where dynamic input will cover that you can also toggle dynamic input with give me a second here f6 that's dynamic UCS no it's f12 yeah it should be there it is I keep hitting I keep looking for a status command over here it's actually right here so f12 will do it as well um, next you've got our uh, polar tracking so if you just turn it on <clears throat> by default it may be set to 90 what this does is without ortho turned on you'll see like these little um phantom lines that allow you to uh, basically put your cursor at those spe specified angles that's no different than ortho um, until you come in here hit the down arrow um, and change it to another angle like 45 now all of a sudden and i still got my dynamic input on uh, now all of a sudden you've got 45 degrees as an option, which is kind of nice. You can just follow it. It's like having an ortho at a specific angle. So that's polar tracking. You've also got um, ISO um, for your grid and stuff. This is if you have to draw in an isometric view. F5 will sh uh, shift through the ISO views. Um, so you can draw like uh, if I do a line this and I put ortho on it will draw at an isometric view and if I have to do like a different version of it like maybe do like this and go up or the other way 
F5 will allow you to change that. I used to do uh, isometric for like plumbing riser diagrams and things of that nature. So that's ISO view. We turn that off. Um, and here you can see isoplane left, top, and right. That was the F5 that was allowing me to switch through that. Next, we've got uh, object snap tracking. This is if, uh, let's turn that on. This is if I uh, want to like maybe use the edge of an object. I can hover over the snap and it leaves a little blip there. And then what happens is I can now use that as a reference, a phantom line as a reference to draw another object. Let's say I want to draw a rectangle in line with this one. Just hover over, get that snap tracking, um, and then I can start this one here. And I can also make it the same height. Look at that. Same height. And then I can say I want to go to this point here. I've got two markers here and here, so I can take it, take it to the intersection. And now it's like matched up. So snap tracking is super, super handy, especially like in paper space when you're trying to line things up. Okay. Uh, then we've got our uh, just our regular snap and you can choose which snaps you want to have on here. You could go to the dialog box and do it all here too, but if you want a quick access to it, um, F3 will also toggle your, your um, O snap on and off, and you can choose which snaps you want, and that's just your regular object snap. So without it on, obviously, you won't be able to snap to anything. So um, Next, we've got show and hide line weights. So this is only really going to be apparent if you either zoom into an object or if you have your line weight set. So, um, for example, if you went to line weight, and my default line weight is showing up as 0.25, and I may, I may be too big of a scale for me to see this. Let me zoom in here. I also don't have any plot styles set up, so this one's not really showing it. But let's, how big is this line? Let's, or this rectangle? It's 10 inches. Let's do a hypothetical. Let's drag this and set this uh, line weight at something thick. There we go. So this is like a printing line weight. With line weights turned off, you won't see this, but line weights turned on, this kind of shows you how thick something will print uh, when it does print. You may have different thicknesses for different objects. Um, you know, let's show you real small. These are coming up looking tiny. There we go. So that's how you can view your line weights. Uh, transparency, if you have transparency for a layer, I'm just going to do a quick layer. Transp. Uh, setting the transparency for this to like 50. Say I turn one of these into a an object, like an actual 3D object, and I go put it on that layer. Uh, because it's got transparency applied, if my transparency is on, it will show up uh, like a, a, a darker color, and it should be, when I go to my visual style, transparent. If I were to turn transparency off, you wouldn't see that. And then, of course, the color would be um, back to being completely white again. So transparency can be viewed using the transparency icon. Okay. Um, let's do this from the top. Next, you've got our uh, selection cycling. So selection cycling is like this. If you have it turned on, when you select objects, and it should give it to me, and it may want to, I think it's with a control. There it is. So it wants to know which one's which. I think it's if you have like overlapping objects. Um, it wants to know, like for me, which one am I talking about? If I have this turned off and I hold control, I won't get that option. But with it on and I have overlapping objects, it wants to know, well, which one of these objects are you talking about? So that's selection cycling. Uh, I think there's other ways to get it to work too. Like if you have it turned on and you're trying to um, do things, it'll, it'll, I don't use it very often. So I don't know the full extent of selection cycling, but I have seen it pop on. But if you see that window pop up, that's kind of really what it's for. If you see that window pop up and you see you're, you're doing something and you see something like this, your selection cycling is turned on. This one here is your uh, 3D uh, O snaps. Now I haven't really gone over these. Um, maybe I will later on, but uh, 3D O snaps are very similar to regular O snaps. It's just that they apply to 3D objects. So like where, if I do a 2D O snap, it's applying to the end point of this line, what it considers to be a line or the midpoint of this line. Um, whereas, turn this off, 3D O snaps consider this to be a vertice. So I have not have any of my O snaps turned on. I went to uh, I went to selection cycling. 
or filtering. So you can see it's got a different snap, and this is actually trying to snap to uh, a, a vertice. And if you click here, you can see all your different options. So like I can also go to the center of the face there, which is kind of cool. Instead of doing mid between two points, you can just hit the center of the face. Um, although you can't do it like from behind, like I can't get the center of the face down on the bottom without rotating around. So that's uh, 3DO snaps. Uh, next one, we've got our dynamic UCS. So uh, dynamic UCS can also be activated with, and I did this just a second ago, uh, the F6. So you'll see it turn on and off. That's like if you were to draw a line on, on the face of an object, um, what it wants to do is dynamically change the UCS for me. Notice how like nothing's happening until I go and draw uh, a line, so specify line, and now it wants to like know like what I'm doing here, and it will change the UCS as a result because it's looking at it from a front view because it's looking it's aligning it with this. You know, I'm kind of curious because I haven't really done this. I bet you if I drew it here, yeah, see how it allows me to draw a line perpendicular to this, which is actually kind of cool. Same thing like if I do a rectangle, the rectangle's not an angle without having to set the UCS manually. Dynamic UCS has its uses, but if you're modeling and you don't want that, and you're, you're starting to see like faces being highlighted and all that, just turn your dynamic UCS off and you can hit that with F6. Um, this one, sub-object selection mode, uh, I want to say that's when you have an object selected. Um, so it's like, let's try this. Let me turn our thing back on. Let's say that I have two objects and I union them together. Okay, they're now one object. If I can hold control, nothing's happening. If I turn it off, see that? I can now individually select objects. Um, I think you can control the degree to which these things filter. So like if I do this, no, this is not let me do it either. So. I don't really know too much about uh, this uh, object selection filtering, especially for 3D. Um, but I know that if you turn it off, you can actually hold control. And even though I have a 3D solid, I can hold control and select the original objects and modify them, which is actually really, really cool. Because like I can do, even though this is one object, I can select this and raise that portion of it. And it's still one object. So yeah, I really didn't go over that yet, I don't think. But that's actually super cool to, to do. OK. Uh, moving on, um, so we did the uh, object selection mode, which we don't have turned on right now. Uh, back to vertex or whatever that was. Turn it off. Next is your gizmo. I did not use the gizmo, but you could. So uh, if you have the gizmo turned on, um, you won't see it until you're in a visual style and you select an object. So like, let's say I'm in three like three D wireframe. I was in two. I always work in two D wireframe. But let's assume you're in three D wireframe. If you select an object now. You get this gizmo that is like Navisworks. If you've, if you've ever used Navisworks, instead of using commands, this is like the move gizmo. I can just grab this and move it with the gizmo. Um, this one allows me to move it in two different planes uh, along the Z and the X, or just straight up in the Z. And then you can also change to the uh, rotate gizmo and the scale gizmo. So I, again, I don't use gizmos, but they're there if you ever want to mess around with that. So that's how you get to the status toggle for that one. Um, move that back to what it was. Then you've got all your, if you do any amount of annotation, um, which I don't, but if you do, kind of your quick access stuff will be here, like showing your annotation objects to begin with and um, status toggles for adding, a, this is add the scale to annotative objects when the annotation scale changes. Yada, yada, yada. I, again, I don't do the only time I really do annotative objects is for uh, line type scales, which I might do something quick on that later on. Now, next you get your workspace switching. This is if you if you operate with different workspaces, or maybe when you're loading up CAD for the first time, which you probably will be on that now. Uh, you can switch your workspaces here. I have a custom one, but um, you can do that workspace switching or save your current workspace or change things about it that you want to. But your quick access to that is here. Um, Again, this is annotation. Um, when you do actually get an annotation, it's going to be, um, you know, your annotation monitor, I guess, whatever that is. Again, I don't, I don't really mess with that. So, your units, I never really, really need to send my units because I, I, I initialize them from the beginning. But if you need to, to mess with those, 
Uh, it'll show you what units you're using. If you click the arrow, you can switch between architectural, decimal, blah, blah, blah. So uh, then you got your quick properties. This is like if you turn this on and you select an object, it shows you the quick properties about that object. To me, this window is a little annoying. I don't need to see the quick properties all the time. So I just leave quick properties turned off. Um, lock user interface. So you don't have to display this. It's kind of, a, to me, it's kind of a set it and forget it. I lock my user interface through here, like using lock location. Um, it's the same thing. If you turn it off, off, everything is unlocked. If you turn it on, whatever you have selected here becomes locked. So my docked toolbars and panels are locked. So if I, I can't come in, there's no, there's no grips anymore to move these toolbars. But if I turn it off, those little grips become available and I can move my uh, toolbars around. This is great because you don't want to accidentally move your stuff around. Um, same thing with like pallets, like these pallets, I can move them, but if I were to change this to um, floating windows or even docked windows, if I say these are docked windows, um, I can no longer move them. It just doesn't allow me to anymore. I can't drag that. So that's really handy if you don't want to accidentally have your stuff like fly off the screen or something. So, um, isolate objects is kind of, it's kind of cool. If you have an object you want in, in the mix of everything and you don't want to, uh, you, you want to like, just look at that one object, just say isolate objects and then it'll isolate whatever you have. Um, and then you can just say end object isolation. And there you are. It's really cool. If you have like a bunch of stuff, but you want to just work in one thing, like one area with just a few objects, you can isolate those objects. We're getting close to the end here. Uh, this is your hardware acceleration. You can right click this and go to graphics performance and it brings up your hardware acceleration tab. Um, I don't really, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get into this, but just a quick tip. I usually don't keep any of this stuff selected. I have a decent graphics card. It's not crazy, but it's decent. Um, we can see right there, I got the RX 570, which is like middle of the road. It's not like, um, you know, super high end. Um, but it's decent, but I still keep stuff turned off because I don't really need all the stuff and it does it, it does speed it up and make it look in some cases make it look better. So but I do keep the hardware acceleration turned on to make use of that video card. Uh, lastly is cl uh, clean screen. This is if you want to if you want to hit this, it will basically hide everything, give you bigger working space. And then when you're done, uh, you want all your space back. You can just click it again. This is obviously if you're if you're. Um, your command line is still here. If you're very command line oriented, you don't need all your toolbars in the way. You can do this clean screen to get you more workspace. And that's it. Now we're back to this whole um, list here where you click these three lines. You can turn whatever you don't need on and off. Like I don't use coordinates. Um, most of the stuff I don't need to use at all because I know toggles for it. Grid is uh, uh, F7 and uh, your snap is F9. Um, but some stuff you may still want to keep here. So keep what you want, remove what you don't need. Um, and, and yeah, that's about it. So hopefully now the status bar is a bit, is a bit clear, uh, to understand what these things are. You can choose what you want to have for, I'd say only keep up here, whatever you need to, to toggle on and off. If you don't know any other toggles, like if you don't know the, the F commands, um, you can, you can toggle stuff from here. Um, speaking of toggles, if you haven't done them already, uh, I'll quickly go over the F functions. I'm just going to name them off. So your F1 is going to be your help file. Okay. Your F2 is going to be your um, the window here, the, the expanded command line. F3 is going to be your ortho. F4 is going to be your, not ortho, O snaps. F4 is going to be your 3D O snaps. F5 is going to be your uh, switching of your isoplane. Um, when you're doing isometric drafting. F6 is your dynamic ECS. F7 is your grid. F8 is your ortho. Okay. F9 is your snap. Uh, your actual grid snap is what they call that. Not, oh, not O snap, your grid snap. F10 is going to be your polar, which we did earlier. Your polar tracking. F11 is going to be your uh, object snap tracking. So if you do this little number, uh, oops, there you go. Object snap tracking, that's your F11, okay? And then F12 will be your dynamic UCS, so if you're doing stuff, it comes in here. So those are all your function keys. Um, hopefully this clears some things up and gets you a little bit wiser when it comes to your status toggles.